so this is the tooth that we're working on today. So as you can see, it's got some old fillings that have decay underneath them, and the front part of the tooth also has a crack, which also has decay. If we then look at the x-ray, the area of decay is on the front part of the tooth, as well as on the biting surface underneath the old fillings. So we're going to take out the fillings, clean out the crack, clean out the decay, and then put a new filling in. So we start off first by removing the existing fillings, and I do this with a high-speed round diamond burr. Basically, I don't want to remove much more than the filling itself, just enough so I can assess what's happening underneath. So when we look at that, you can see that there's a little bit of decay on the front filling and a bit on the back as well. Now it's time to remove the decay on the front half of the tooth. And whenever I do this, because I'm not exactly 100% sure where the decay is, I always take it quite slowly and I do it quite conservatively. I want to make sure that the area that I'm drilling actually lines up with where the decay is. So I'll always go in until I can first see that brown area there, which is the decay. So now that I know where it is, I can be a bit more aggressive when I remove because I know exactly where the decay is. So I'll extend past it to make sure the enamel is clear. Now, can you see how that's a bit chalky white color? That chalky white color is the starting process of decay. So that enamel is quite weak as well. So we have to remove that too when we are removing the decay. So once I've done that with my high speed, I'll then come to it with an ultrasonic. And my ultrasonic scaler is basically removing any unsupported weak enamel. You can do this with a burr, but it is very easy with a burr to hit the next door tooth and cause some damage to it. So an ultrasonic scaler is really good at it. Uh, I can see there's a little bit of that white chalky enamel on the outside surface of the tooth. So I'm just going at it again with my ultrasonic. And you can see here that the contact has been broken and it's all looking really, really good. The only problem is that that crack, I can still see it in this front section of the tooth. And I don't want that crack to be there because if I can see it, it means that bacteria can definitely get inside. So I'm just removing a bit more in the area where the crack is. And then once I feel comfortable with how much I've removed, then I will then feel it and visually look at it to see if I need to remove any more. And when I feel with my Explorer, I can just feel a slight little bump. So I'll remove a tiny bit more. And that's basically all I need to do for the crack. And then the last little bit is again, just back to my ultrasonic to remove any unsupported enamel. Now we go back to the top portion of the tooth and I'm just addressing the areas where that decay is. So I'll go at it with my high speed first. And then after I've cleaned it out with my high speed, I'll then switch over to my slow speed burr. So I'm just feeling around, making sure it's all clear and then looking at the other areas where there might be some more decay. So that bit there had a little bit more decay there. So again, open it up with my high speed to get access to it and then come to it with my slow speed burr, slow speed round burr on about 5,000 revs. And you can see that chalky powdery stuff, that is the decay that's there. So we're cleaning that out on the back part of the tooth and then the middle. Again, you can see where it's chalky. I need to extend a little bit further in to get a bit better access to it to clean it out with my high speed. Hey, super quick, if you're getting something out of the video, please like, share, or subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. All right, back to the video. And then that'll be basically the decay removed off of that top part of the tooth. Now we're working on the front half, same sort of process. We're using that slow speed burr just to remove any of that soft, decayed tooth structure. And once I've done that, the last bit is to go around with a flame burr to do what we call a slight bevel to the tooth. So what I'm doing is on the enamel margin, I'm putting a very thin, um, high angled bevel to remove unsupported enamel, but also to open up the enamel rod slightly to get better bond strength. So I do this on any surface that I have access to basically. And this is my cavity preparation done. I'm really happy with it. So now it's time to fill it. So we put in the sectional matrix on the front half of the tooth. I'll put it in position first and then check to see, but it's not really lining up properly. So what I do is my flat plastic, I'll wedge that in to push it in underneath the rubber dam and then push with my finger over the top and now it's perfectly adapted to the tooth. So then I'll use a wedge, but I'll modify the wedge. The way that I'm modifying this wedge is to make sure that the top half of the wedge doesn't actually push in the matrix. And when I mean push in is change the shape of the matrix. I want it to have a nice gentle curve, but if this wedge is a bit too high, it will actually deform my matrix. So often I'll chop off the top half of it. Now I'll line it up and then I'll put my finger in just to make sure the matrix doesn't move as I push the wedge into place and I'll push nice and hard. And then once it is in place, I'll verify that from looking from above and we've got a really, really good adaptation. So then my V-ring will go in place and then again, check to make sure. And then I'll use my burnisher to get a nice tight contact with the tooth in front. Then I'm gonna use my micro etch. This removes any plaque. It also opens up the enamel pore slightly to get better bonding. Then I'll rinse it off. 
and then I'll etch the enamel. Now try to only etch the enamel. If you etch the dentine, it can lead to a decrease in bond strength, but also some sensitivity. So we're gonna leave this in place for about 20 seconds. Then after that, rinse with water, and then you're going to dry it. But don't over dry it to the point where the dentine becomes frosted because it can lead to sensitivity. Now we're gonna use Microprime. Microprime, you basically rub it into the dentine for about 20 seconds, then leave it for 10. And then again, you're going to air dry it, but don't over dry it again. Microprime helps decrease sensitivity. Then you're gonna use your primer, and the primer, same thing, wanna rub it into the tooth for about 10 seconds, then leave it for 10, and then thin it. Then you'll come to place your bond, and with the bond, it's the same idea. You want to rub it into the dentine, into the enamel, and then you're going to thin it. Now, when you thin it, you don't want it to pool at the base. You need to make sure that you do thin it enough, so almost to the point where it disappears. Then you're going to cure it, and then after you cure it, it comes to actually placing the resin. Now, the resin, you have to place it in increments. If you place it in one big blob, because it shrinks slightly when it sets, it will actually pull away from the wall slightly. It leads to temperature sensitivity, staining at the margins, big problems. So you have to place it in increments. So I place it in small increments and then I'll use an explorer to adapt it to the walls and to also make sure there aren't going to be any air bubbles because we are using a flowable. Then after that, we're going to cure it. And when I cure it, I cure it from a distance and then start moving towards the tooth up for about two or three seconds and then we'll hold it in place. Now my assistant's holding one end and I'm holding it with my finger on the other end to make sure it's in the exact correct position. Then same story, we're gonna add another bit more of an increment and then we're gonna be placing that on the opposite side of where you place the first one or the next little bit along, trying to make sure it's not touching too many walls of the actual cavity at once and then we'll agitate it and adapt it to the walls with the Explorer. I'll do this on the, the box portion of the class two cavity on the front part of the tooth as well. This is probably the most important part to do that to make sure it is well adapted. Then again, we'll cure it and then we'll just keep going through these increments. So I'm just gonna show you here basically the parts where I do place the increments, just knowing that each time I am using my Explorer and I am curing it. Then for this final increment on that front section of the tooth, I will then use my Explorer to shape the, the ridge of the tooth slightly because if I can shape it here, it'll actually save me time afterwards. And it's a little bit easier to do this here rather than with a burr. So then we've finished our curing and then I'll take everything off, take out the sectional matrix. My little trick here is that I'll grab onto it and I'll twist it at the same time, but unfortunately it rips. And the reason is that the matrix is basically attached to the resin. So I use my flat plastic to detach it from the resin. So then when I come to grab it with my tweezers, it does come out. So I'll grab onto it, twist and then pull at the same time and away it comes. And that's how that's looking. So now I'll do a full cure on the buckle and then on the occlusal and then on the palatal. This full cure, it's actually a three second cure. It's a high powered one with this light. So I always do that at the end. Then I'll first go around with my ultrasonic, making sure I get rid of any bond that might be on the tooth or on the tooth next door that might affect the occlusion at the end. And then I'll see the areas that I need to be finishing and shaping. Now, most of my shaping, I'll actually do it with burrs at the end, so in this phase. So I'm just basically going around now to shape these fillings, the three fillings that we've done to the anatomy of the tooth. Uh, the shaping, I do it mostly at the start with a coarse, it's like a mini uh, Christmas tree burr or a flame burr. Uh, and I'll just go around to follow the, the tooth anatomy just to get the same contours. Now, the better I have the anatomy in this phase, the less adjustments they will have to do once I take the rubber dam off and to check the bite. Now, do you have to shape anatomy into your fillings? No, I know a lot of dentists that will just basically flatten things off, but I like to do it because one, it makes me feel good, but most importantly, this is how the tooth was designed. The tooth is designed with bumps and grooves to help the patient chew and to help your teeth be more effective. So I will always do that when I'm shaping these fillings just because it's, it's how the tooth is designed. I'd rather try to restore that. Once that I've done that with my coarse flame burr, I'll then do the same thing with a polishing version of that. So this is a red band one. And so I'll go over the same bumps and grooves in the same fashion. This one's more, it's less to take things away, but more just to smooth things off. So once I've done my gross reduction, I think I'm happy with how much I have reduced, then I'll go over that. And the shape's actually looking quite nice there. So next little bit is to take the rubber dam off. This is my little trick. I'll cut it with some scissors, take the rubber dam off. It just means it doesn't flick each time you do pull it out between the teeth. Check the occlusion, and we do have some adjustments to make. We've got some contact on the teeth next door. You can see that with the blue, and those contacts mean that I'm close, so I don't have to do too much adjusting, but I do have to do some. So 
Then we'll check again. And again, a few little spots to, to adjust here. And I'll do most of this with that red flame diamond burr that we were using before, unless it's like a really gross, if I'm way off, then I'll go back to my coarse one, but otherwise it'll be mostly with the red. Now it's looking really good. The main contact that we have on the tooth, it's not on the filling, it's on the tooth structure itself. So we're now ready to polish it. And to polish, I'll use a composite polisher. It doesn't really matter which one that you do use, but just make sure that you do go on different bumps and grooves and angles to polish it all. Then I will check with my floss, really tight contact, which I'm happy with. And then I'll go around it with my Explorer just to make sure there aren't any areas that are catching, everywhere feels smooth. So that means that this filling is now done. So I'm gonna show you the before, during and after. Uh, and as you can see, old filling wasn't very good. We've taken out the old filling, cleaned out the decay, and then we've filled it. And when we fill it, we've aimed to replicate what the original tooth structure would have looked like to make sure this patient has a nice, fully functioning tooth. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you got something out of the video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Those things really help me out a lot. And if you've got any questions about the procedure, feel free to put them in the comment section. I'll get back to them. Have a great day and keep on smiling.